everyone, this is Amanda from DevotionInAction.com and we are kicking off our series in 2 Timothy. This is called Light in Dark Times and I wanted to kind of uh, <laughs> plan out my Bible art journaling. So this time for this series, you're going to have all of the printables at once for the whole series because I noticed that in my Bible, I have like chapter one, chapter two, chapter three starts here, and then on chapter, the rest of chapter three and chapter four, I already have an entry that I have done here. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of planning, a little bit of creativity to get in all four chapter Bible uh, art journaling. And I was thinking that I might do like one of my entries up here, one kind of here, and one here, and then do a tip in um, that's kind of long and skinny that flips up right here for uh, the chapter four. Or I might flip over and do chapter four here, but since it would be the whole series on this one Second Timothy page, I might just keep it all on this page. So the first three chapters are what I really need to make sure I'm planning for. The first chapter is this Old Fashioned Bellows with the campfire. Um, and I think I'm gonna use this size right here and trace that into this space right here. Week two in chapter two of 2 Timothy is Rosie the Riveter. Um, uh, you'll read more about her in the devotional um, and hear more about her in next week's video. And I think I'm gonna use uh, this size of her right kind of like in this section of the text right here. And week three is this heavy equipment right here. And I haven't decided yet. I think maybe maybe this one right here. I'm going to put right underneath. Second so Timothy might overlap the Y just a tad. But that's where I'm going to trace those um, into those spaces. We're going to start with Second Timothy chapter 1. And our focus verse for this, if I can find it on this page, that's terrible. I'm really tired today, guys. I don't know about you, but I am tired. Um, so it says, therefore I remind you to rekindle, and in um, the ESV it says, fan into flame the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hand. So like you've got some coals going on still there, but you uh, need to rekindle it. You need to add some kindling. You need to uh, bring that fire back up. Um, I need to remind you, therefore I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and sound judgment. And there's a there's another translation that I just absolutely love that says they're a sound disciplined mind, right? So um, I think this is a scripture that um, I come back to again and again in my own life that God has not given me a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and sound judgment, a sound disciplined mind. Um, so we're going to get more into that devotional content as we start to trace and watercolor uh, this image right here. I'm glad you're with me. Come along on this journey with me. Okay, so just folding the edge there so that, that I can get that entry exactly where I want it on the page. And I'm going to washi tape this paper uh, to the Bible page. I notice I'm tapping that with my fingers. Uh, if you don't, sometimes the kind of uh, cloth-like nature of the Dayspring Illustrating Bible will uh, pull up, like you'll get fibers of the paper. It'll tear the paper if you don't tap that washi tape. I'm having a lot of trouble seeing this image through this page that has already already has an entry on the back of it. And so I am going to just cut off that little uh, smaller version of it so that I can see what the lines are that I'm seeing. Um, this is also not going to work all that well. I'm going to have to put some light underneath it um, in order to get to be able to see my husband has this work light that we keep in the garage and it's kind of flat 
and it, it has a flashing mode. So sometimes I have to like reset it because it'll go into like flashing mode where it starts, I don't know, strobing or something, which is really irritating. Now, the interesting thing about this light, using a light behind is that my printer printed these printables two-sided. So I'm seeing like two sets of lines on the, from the printable and I'm seeing the image from the back side of the page. <laughs> It did not make it a lot easier. I mean, it did make it easier, but it didn't make it a lot easier to have uh, the light box. I was, I was, I'm keep, I'm keeping on looking at the back to to try to differentiate between what the lines are on on this on this printable. So you're gonna see me struggling a bit to trace this time. Hopefully, you won't have as much trouble as I was having. Um, sometimes. It, it might work out better just to go ahead and look at the picture and draw it <laughs> from from looking at it. I don't know. I don't know. You'll have to see what works the best for you. If you have tips, I would love to hear them uh, because I was really struggling being able to see uh, these lines on here and and trace them out. So, so let's remember um, kind of where we are um, as we start Second Timothy. We did all of First Timothy. Um, Timothy was a young pastor that Paul had kind of taken under his wing and mentored him. Uh, Paul took him on some missionary journeys with him and then they get to Ephesus and Ephesus, the church at Ephesus really needed some strong leadership because there were some tricky things that we talked about in first Timothy that were going on there as far as like, um, the people of the church and, um, and them needing good leadership. And so, um, so Paul says, I'm going to leave Timothy here to be the pastor of this church at Ephesus. And because I know that he is well trained and knows the truth and, can really guide the church at Ephesus. So, but Timothy um, kind of comes from a background. He is uh, mixed race. Like um, he has one parent who's a Jew and one who's a Greek. Um, it, Paul commends um, like his mother and his grandmother for bringing him up in the word and, and kind of repeatedly encourages him because it seems like Timothy kind of struggles with confidence issues and uncertainty and doubt um, in his abilities to guide the church at Ephesus. But then we get to 2 Timothy, and Paul and Timothy are facing some serious struggles. And, and Paul can see that things are about to get worse. It's a very dark time in their lives. And I know so many people who the past year, couple of years, handful of years, um, or even, even months, if it's been a shorter time for you, have been a dark time in your life. But Paul, he's near the end of his life, and he writes from a prison in Rome to the young pastor Timothy, the second letter, and it encourages Timothy and lets us know that when we face dark times in our own lives, that God is still faithful and loves us, and he will provide light for our paths. So as we start 2 Timothy chapter 1, it says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. This is like, who's writing? He's, he's telling who is writing this letter to you. To Timothy, who the letter is to, my beloved child. Timothy was not actually Paul's actual child. He's like a spiritual father to Timothy. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. He's it's been like a blessing at the beginning. Like, may you have the grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love 
and self-control. So that takes us through verse seven, like verses one through seven. And I love that we see like this heritage of faith from his grandmother and his mother. And I love, 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 love that phrase fan into flame. When we're in the middle of dark times, God is always there for us, but we have a job to do too. We need to fan into flame the gift of God within us. When we trust God for our salvation, he puts his spirit in us. God does not fear anything or anyone, and his spirit is full of power and love and self-control. This gift of God is within us, and we have to fan it into flame. Now, we also have gifts that God gives us through his spirit, like the gift of teaching or the gift of prophecy or the gift of hospitality or the gift of, you know, whatever God has gifted you with that he expects you to use for the purpose of his kingdom, no matter what your occupation is. I'm not talking about like going into full-time ministry, although some people do, but like wherever God has placed you in your home, in your workplace, in your community, uh, to use the gifts that God has given you in order to advance the kingdom of God. And so now I'm pulling out my Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pen. Okay, that is Faber-Castell. I talk too fast. Pitt Artist Pen. It's India ink, and it does not react with water, so I can do this before I watercolor. Um, and that's going to help me kind of uh, see where I've traced this and 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 be able to follow it. If you don't have a pen that does not react to water, then you'll need to watercolor with the pencil marks and then um, line out afterwards. So, so when I read this passage, I remembered that my grandfather used to use an old fashioned bellows like the one in this week's free printable that we've just traced um, when he was building a fire in the fireplace. A bellows, it draws air in from one side and then focus it and blows it out the other side. The oxygen that moves through the bellows fuels the fire and fans the flames higher. Um, and in a similar way, we have to remind ourselves whose spirit is within us, fanning into flame the gift of God within us. We have to kind of breathe in the Holy Spirit, right? We have to just say, okay, God, yes, I need your power. I need your spirit. It's not by my might, not by my power, but by your spirit, God. And, and kind of don't keep that within ourselves to make us feel better but to breathe that out into the situations of our lives or onto the people around us so that we are um, focusing that oxygen and those flames, like the, the gift inside of us can burst into flames and, and really um, continue to burn as we use it uh, for the kingdom of God. So God has equipped us with everything we need to accomplish his purposes in our lives. Second Peter 1.3 says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. Like he's already given us everything that we need, right? In order to live a Christ-centered life. But sometimes we get stuck in the darkness and we really need that reminder to breathe in the Holy Spirit and breathe out uh, reminders of the all-powerful, incredible God whose spirit is within us and empowers us, like a bellows fanning into flame the gift of God that is inside of us. So if we continue reading, I'm erasing all the pencil marks so that all I have is the pen marks before I start to watercolor this image. Um, if we continue in the verses, verses 8 through 12 says, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace. And to get kind of a, a skin color, that is similar to my own. <laughs> um, I used um, a little bit of orangey pink and a little bit of kind of a golden color and uh, quite a bit of water in that mixture so that it's not 
super super dark because I have like paper copy paper type skin <laughs> that burns very easily um, and then um, I just gave her some pink fingernails a little bit darker skin tone to create some shadowing and dimension on those arms and hands and those nails turned out really really pink so at some point I'm going to make those add a little bit of red to those to lessen how like Barbie pink they are um, because it was a little garish on my page uh, to me so um, then I'm going to uh, create a, kind of a wooden a wood color the outside of these old-fashioned bellows would have been like um, wood for the paddles that she's holding on to and the inside was like kind of like a black leather ish kind of stuff that wraps up and then is secured by brass grommets or is that the word tacks maybe tacks um, those round things that you see in the picture and then the end uh, the very end nozzle part would have, would be metal um, at least that's the way my grandfathers were when I was growing up <laughs> Um, and so that's kind of what I was picturing when I was drawing these bellows. Um, so, uh, God saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. I love that Paul is here in prison, but he's like, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of being imprisoned because of this. Um, I will say this. I added to the gray, grayish, blackish watercolor, I added some purple to that um, for the black leather that connects the wooden pieces there. And because black and white don't, our eye doesn't always register them as exactly black and white. So when we just paint out like black, it's going to cover all of the lines and make it, difficult to see the details um, if we do that so it's nice to kind of think about what colors are actually kind of showing through it as light reflects off of it and things like that and so um, that's why I went with this uh, kind of purple with the gray a grayish purple on the leather part of the bellows adding in um, wood on that campfire wood and um, and then uh, we're going to get started on flames. Now the flames, I'm going to leave some white space because there are white flames. I'm going to put some, uh, oh, I think I'm going to fix those fingernails first. Um, I'm going to add in some blue because there's blue flames, yellow, orange, and red. All, a lot of color in the fire. Um, I love fire. <laughs> I'm a bit of a pyro, I think. I love campfires. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here's what happened. <laughs> The file in between um, uh, when I had not started painting the fire and this one that it popped to, that file like was corrupted when I took it out of my camera. I don't know, I don't know what happened there. Um, so that's why you get like this. I'm gonna tell you, I did, left a little bit of white, especially where it's blowing into the fire, the hottest part of the flame will be the white and the blue. So um, where the bellows is blowing in, I left some white and I added a little bit of blue, not a ton of blue, because I didn't want to end up with a green fire. And then I did the yellow base, and I came back and added orange, and then I came back and added touches of red on edges. Um, you see how that's kind of edging, mostly left edges of some of the flames. So you get a more natural like flame look and then the I didn't let them dry in between so it kind of uh, melded together which is really nice because that's what watercolor does and this is a blue and it's kind of on the blue green side of blue with some gray mixed in I am bringing that in to 
surround my picture and then I'm gonna darken with even more gray the corners and the top edge almost like it's nighttime and or you know darkness because our the theme of our whole series is light in dark times right and and that fire is lighting the area around me but then further away it's darker that's and to keep the gray smoke I'm just very lightly hardly any pigment on my brush at all dragging that blue up in kind of a through that gray so that it's not just gray on top of white you also have some of the blue in there as well see adding in gray and making it darker around the edges um, so when we bring our minds into alignment with who God is we will be convinced that he is able to protect and keep us and our gifts so we need to finish up 2nd Timothy 13 through 18 follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. You are aware that all who are in Asia turned away from me, among whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. May the Lord grant mercy to the ho household of Onesiphorus. Oh, I don't know if I'm saying any of those names right. For he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. But when he arrived in Rome, he searched for me earnestly and found me. May the Lord grant him to find mercy from the Lord on that day. And you well know all the service he rendered at Ephesus. So our action step for this week. Fanning into flame involves telling ourselves the truth about who God is and reminding ourselves that his spirit is within us. Today, let's take some time to realign our minds. My pastor says often that we cannot apply God's word to our lives. We need to apply our lives to God's word. It's the unchanging standard. Only when we bring our lives into alignment with him will we find peace in the middle of dark times. And let me pray for you. Dear God, thank you for never leaving us. You are always with us, even in the middle of our darkest times. Help us see what lies we have been believing that keep us from fanning into flame the gift you have placed in us. Remind us to keep fanning the flame on a daily basis. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining me for week one. I hope you have enjoyed it. And be sure to watch next week for 2 Timothy 2. Have a great week.